Students, um, so to continue on with lesson 4.1, um, here are what your notes um, are going to be like, all right? And this is going to be presented to you in an outline form, so do with it um, as you see, okay? Uh, so the Indus River Valley. Um, one of the great things about uh, the people of the Indus River Valley is that they were great um, planners, okay? And what I mean by this is that they organized their city uh, in ways which resemble modern day cities, okay? So the Mahajindaro, all right, was um, originally built above ground level. Uh, it was built above ground level um, because it was kind of a way to keep it um, safer from future attacks, okay? Um, the buildings were laid out in blocks, and what I mean by this is if you look at a normal city, um, like let's say, for instance, South Bend, most of the streets either run north and south, kind of like this, or they run east and west, okay? And then this empty space in between them, these are what are called blocks, all right? Which was unique because in a lot of modern day cities, uh, you had something at the center of the city, all right? Like a temple or mosque or, or some kind of important, uh, maybe a capital building. And then you may have a road that runs off this way, a road that runs off that way, road that runs off that way. Well, maybe I need to get to here, so I'll go like this, or maybe I'll make a side street, another side street, maybe it comes around the back. Um, maybe the side street goes like this, this one goes like this, this one may go off and come up and then go like this and come down and go around and up and in, whatever. There really wasn't any plan to cities, streets, okay? And so you have streets all over the place. If you've ever been to um, like a Frankfurt, Germany, or Madrid, Spain, or Rome, or some of the really old cities um, in Europe, these are how a lot of them are set up. Even in some of our cities, um, like New York City is set up this way um, in some parts of it, and so is Washington, D.C. So, you know, depending upon where you go uh, in the world, your, the cities may either look more like this, or they may look more like this. All right. Um, and so the citadel, which was the fort, um, was always at the city's highest point, and this was so that it could protect the city. Uh, they also had clay pipes under the streets that carried waste away from homes and public buildings, i.e. a sewer system. Okay, So we're talking, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 BCE. They already have these, um, they already have sewer systems. You know, this is an amazing accomplishment within human society. So life there uh, is filled with merchants, artisans, and traders, right? It was a, much like uh, Cairo and Egypt that we've recently studied, or think further back like a, a Babylonia or Sumer, uh, some of those Mesopotamian cities that were centers of trade and people came there, um, you know, to get a better life and have a better life. Um, again, you know, they enjoyed music, games, pets, uh, the language, writing, and government religion um, are still unknown to historians, probably because it was destroyed when the Aryans came in, um, but we don't really know why. It just, we haven't been able to find evidence of it, okay? Um, so this kind of leads to this mysterious decline. So around 2000 BCE, um, farmers just kind of abandoned uh, their land. Many historians feel that this might have been from a a drought that hit at the time. Um, that's what kind of some of the evidence has shown us. Uh, other people, other historians have other f ideas. We don't really know. There's no written record of why they left. We just know that they left. So for, um, so for about a 500 year span there, um, we start to have these newcomers who enter um, from the north into this valley. Okay, So maybe that's why they abandoned their land, is that they knew that this new group was coming in and that they were going to take them over. We just really don't know. All right, so here, again, some examples of uh, the city that we just talked about. Here is a modern-day picture of it. Here is what it looks like uh, in terms of a sketch rendering of it. Um, so, again, you know, the citadel right here uh, in the middle of the city. And then you know, have residential areas on the outside of the city. People would come into the city to work. Uh, so, you know, they had a college there. Uh, they had bathhouses there. And that's what this is a picture of. This is a picture of a bathhouse. Um, you know, they had 
a granary where all the grain was stored. So a very, um, very, very plant, well planned out, well executed uh, town. Okay, uh, here's a picture of the citadel. I'm um, looking, you know, standing at the base of something and looking up. So again, it's very high in elevation. Uh, these walls right along here, these pillars here, um, you could just imagine that in the day, you know, there's probably a giant um, wall-like something or other here that would have helped to protect the citadel um, and from invaders getting in. Uh, it looks like there might have been a doorway right here. Uh, so, you know, who really knows? You know, it's left to the imagination. We don't really know that much about the city because we just a lot of the information there has vanished over time. Okay, so this leads us to the Verdict Age. Uh, and the Verdict Age is when the Aryans come in, this Aryan culture, okay? And we'll show a map of, I'll show a map of it here at the end of it. But basically the Aryans were um, a civilization, a group of similar culture that came in, found a hole kind of in the uh, Himalayan mountains and came in through the Hindu Kush Pass and ended up um, taking in controlling this area. Uh, so what they did was they combined traditions of the original habits and their beliefs and they also brought their own. Okay, what this does is um, it helps unify the people who they're about to conquer. All right, If you have completely different views from somebody else who you're gonna conquer, you're gonna clash a lot. However, if you have similar views, um, they'll probably still clash, but they'll be more inclined to join you later on, possibly. Um, so they end up spreading from the Indus River Valley to the Ganges River Valley. Um, the religious leaders were called priests, or the religious leaders were priests or Brahmins, okay? And their society was organized into four classes, and I'll show you a, a little pyramid here at the end. Um, because what made it unique is if you look down here at point B, is that the people had to stay in their caste or class of their parents, all right? So if your parent was a Brahmin, then hey, you know, you're up there in the top. However, if your parent was in the bottom of the caste, that's where you had to stay. There was no moving up or down um, within that caste. And we'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that here in a moment. Um, but around 500 CE, uh, BCE, um, you know, this is where the strict division of classes happens, okay? So let's look at them here, all right? Um, so the first is the Shudras, okay? These are the unskilled workers as servants, all right? They called them, um, there's actually an, a group down here um, that would be later be called known as the Untouchables, okay? And they, they were the low of the low, all right? Um, nobody want, you didn't want to be an untouchable, okay? Um, so there's the Shudras, who are your unskilled workers, the servants who worked in the houses. Um, next you have the Vashiyas, okay? And these are more of your skilled traders, merchants, uh, and minor officials. You can kind of think of them as like the middle class uh, of today, all right? Um, and then you have your Kshatriyas, okay? Uh, these are your warriors, your rulers, all right? This is, you know, this is like your kings and queens, um, would be in here, but because of the religious impact that the Aryan society had on India, um, your Brahmins are up at the top. These are your priests, your scholars, uh, you know, the people that run the universities. Uh, the more enlightened ones are um, at the top of society. Okay, and again, you know, the, the Parishas or the Harijan, which are your untouchables, okay. Nobody wants to be an untouchable. In this map, um, you know, and this just shows the Aryan migration uh, into India. You know, they, there's this pass here in the Hindu Kush mountains that they able to come in and spread um, and spread their views and ideas. All right.